Um, sh hold on. I click record. There is no going back. There is no going back from this. We are doing this today as people. Okay. Hey, everybody, and welcome back, or welcome if you are new. I, I don't even know what to say, okay? So, let me just start by saying that I haven't filmed a rant style video in so freaking long. I think the last time I filmed a video of this sort was probably the On the Book Credence by Penelope Douglas, which was a trip. And I thought that that would be the last time I would ever find a book just so, what the actual f But no, I was wrong. So let me just give you some context. So earlier on in this year, I was going through a smut phase and some friends of mine who are also fans of the genre were noticing this and they were like, hey, have you heard of the book Double Edge by Nyla Kay? And I was like, what is that book? And I didn't know about this book at all because I was very new to the genre, but apparently this book had started a firestorm on TikTok upon its release date. The author, Nyla Kay, so I think she's someone who, based on what I looked up just now, is someone who writes male male erotica, smut, whatever, romance, that kind of thing, and I just want to preface this video by saying that I have literally nothing against that genre or its readers, okay? If you look at my Goodreads, you will see that it is a genre that has books that I have personally enjoyed, so I will never write it off, because I have liked and even loved books in that genre, okay? So with that out of the way, let me just say this. I was told that this book was controversial. And when I looked it up on Book Talk, which is where all of the controversy was happening, there was an actual firestorm. Like, there were people saying that this book needed to be banned, that the author needed to be thrown in jail, some people even posting pictures of the frickin' Constitution, citing laws, saying like, oh, this person needs to be jailed up, this is fucked up shit. And I was like, what the hell happened? So I look up this book and it says male, male, male romance. So I was like, okay, that sounds fun. I mean, I really enjoyed the book Their Boy by Cara D, which was MMM. And I loved it. I gave it five freaking stars, well deserved. So I was like, what's the issue? Are people just being homophobes? I did a bit more digging. The title of this book is Double Edged, but I honestly think the title of this book should be called Frickin' Flowers in the Attic, Sweet Home Alabama, Pride Edition. <laughs> what I did not know, and what I learned upon further investigation with it, was that it was a male, male, male romance between a stepdad and his two underage sons. And of course, because there was such controversy surrounding it, I got curious. The human being truly is the most curious animal. The same curiosity that pushed me to watch fucking Cannibal Holocaust when I was 16 years old was the same thing that got me here. I was like, okay, I know I should not touch this with a 10-foot pole, but also, how can I turn away from this now, I need to know what happened, and so I read the fucking book. And in addition to that, it looked to me that a lot of people who were fucking posting about it on TikTok were people who hadn't actually read the book, so I was like, why don't I actually read this book, give it a shot, and see if it warrants its rather intense reputation. Also, the book was 600 fucking pages, dude. Excuse me, I was like, if I'm gonna be spending all this time reading a 600 page book that has no audiobook, I'm gonna find a way to get something out of this for me, okay? I'm gonna find a way. You best believe that my ass is gonna find a way to get some content out of this, okay? So here we are. I read all 600 pages of the book. And we are gonna talk about that book now, today, right now, as people. This video is gonna contain full spoilers. Let me just put that out there. But when I say that this was one of those books that was so crazy, it was nuts. Like, I rarely ever do this. I could not believe what I was reading to the point that I took out my notes app and had to write down what was happening because I was just like, there is no way this is actually happening. But it was, okay? So yes, 
The premise of this book is absolutely wild. But wait till you hear what the fuck actually happens in this thing, okay? I am literally just gonna be telling you everything that happens in this book. That's literally what this video is gonna be, okay? I And I assure you, there will be enough to have your jaw on the floor. Because this was 600 fucking pages, okay? If I had to go through it, so do you. So strap on your strap on, sit on your butt plugs, grab some popcorn, and let's fucking do this, okay? Y'all are gonna think I'm making this up I'm not but just sit back okay relax we're gonna do we're gonna do this we're gonna let the fucking trash fire start so this book starts off with us obviously meeting our main characters so we have Cyrus who is academic shy timid demure has wet dreams with Batman <laughs> yeah that's literally the first scene in the book and then we have his brother Coulson who is this badass like rebel punk kind of dude pushing back against authority anarchist energy like fuck you to the planet that kind of guy after we meet this guy after we meet them we get to a scene where their dad walks in on them make it out Right there, right at the beginning of the book. Given the fact that this was 600 pages, I was under the impression that there was gonna be some waiting time, that there was gonna be some tension, some is it gonna happen, when's it gonna happen, eventually maybe at the 400 page mark, shit starts to happen. Nope, Nyla K wasted literally no fucking time at all. Round one. It was like she had a stopwatch out and was like, all right, incest, start. It's like this author watched Oran High School Host Club and Vampire Night and was like, I ship the twins. So the dad is like, you guys can't be making out. So he like rips him off and he takes Coulson and he ships him off to boarding school. All right, so the stage has been set. So now Coulson is in boarding school and all he can do is think about his brother. He's like, this guy's all alone. He's gonna get bullied in school. I need to the cowardice out of him. He's like so protective to a fault. <laughs> He's like, I love my twin and I need to go back for him. So he devises this genius plan and that plan is to get himself expelled. <laughs> so he beats somebody up, gets expelled, and then gets sent home much to his father's chagrin. So the second he gets home, he's like, hey Cyrus, I missed you. Let's have some brotherly bonding sessions, you know, like it's been a while. So they engage in some mutual Okay, not my idea of sibling bonding, but in this book, it's like something. So do they get caught this time? No, they don't. Because Nyla threw in a plot device. She was like, I need them to do this, but I need them to get away with doing this. And apparently the dad gets arrested for tax evasion, okay? It's like, I was like, okay, so that's one way to get him out. So this results in some shit happening. What's the shit? They and their mom get poor and so they have to move in with their aunt and they're all sad. They're like, this house sucks. I miss our big house. I miss our money. Our standard of living is shit now. I hate this. And also the mom is like a Okay. She makes it her life's mission to find a rich man to marry. So instead of caring for her kids, she goes out on dates and just throws herself at people. So these kids have to resort to stealing food because their mom is too busy finding a rich dad to marry. And all the while they are getting closer. So while they stay in this house, they go to this festival. And when they get home, they in the mouth. And Coulson on Cyrus. I'm gonna bleep a lot of this out because my video on cows got demonetized. It's kind of fucked up how true crime tu YouTubers can talk about the most gruesome shit. Bailey Sarian can put the word cannibal in some of her videos and she gets promoted and I'm like, like, small creators really have it hard here, let me just say. Also, may I just say, when I was going through TikTok, I saw one of the TikToks posting trigger warnings, content warnings for this video, and one of the content warnings were cannibalism. Like, you you TikTokers need to understand that when people see this shit, when they see the content warnings, they might be the kinds of people like me, okay? People who get excited at a list of trigger warnings that is that long, okay? I literally have a channel dedicated to extreme horror. Whenever the trigger warning list is super long, I want to read it, okay? Also, spoiler alert, cannibalism doesn't happen unless you count swallowing. That definitely happened. 
But yeah, I went into this book expecting some ritualistic human sacrifice, and that's not what fucking happened. Like, you TikTokers need to understand that putting tags that don't correspond inevitably make the story sound more interesting than it is, which is not the case here. <laughs> anyway, that was a random thing. Let's get back to the rant. So eventually this mama bitch finds this new guy named, I think his name is Ta Taurin? Taurin? Who's all taken by her. He's like, oh, she's magical. I love her. So she takes him home to meet the kids. And if you were a rich billionaire and this woman with no bank account showed up to you and said, hey, I've got no bank account, I've got nothing going on in life, my entire past year has just been me throwing myself at men to see what sticks, do you want to marry me? Also, I have twins. Would you wipe her up? Would you? Because he does. So she takes him home to meet the kids. Initially, Coulson hates him because he is bonding with Cyrus a lot, and he's like, how dare you steal my brother from me, you motherfucker. So yeah, him and Cyrus are a bunch of nerds, and they're bonding on nerdy shit. He's like, let's buddy read Dune together. If someone offered to buddy read Dune with me, friendship's over. So Coulson is like, fuck you, Cyrus is mine. <laughs> so Coulson starts acting up. He starts getting all rowdy and violent. He beats up this guy in school who was bullying Cyrus. And of course, the principal calls him in. He's like, you can't be beating the shit out of people, dude. And his stepfather has to come in and bail him out because the mom is too busy using the stepdad's money to, um, go to parties and rich people shit and eat in fancy restaurants. So now this guy who married this woman is having to take care of her shit for her, which is like, this does not sound like a fun life to me at all. So blah, 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 um, they get married and the st and Tauren, shit. Tauren and the mom, whose name I don't remember, go on a honeymoon. So while they're on the honeymoon, there is freedom for these two brothers. So now that Coulson is alone, he, makes Cyrus a and while Cyrus is getting by the he takes the out and shoves in his so literally barely 200 pages in we've had mutual um full on and I'm like there is 400 pages more. What the hell is gonna happen? I regret asking. And if you think that this book just stops at the Sweet Home Alabama, ho oh boy, ho oh boy, just you wait. So Taryn and the mom get back from their honeymoon. The mom is like just going off doing her own thing. And one night Cyrus catches Taryn in his office, full on off to a uh, gay, you know? And then Coulson catches Cyrus watching this, sees that he's excited and then forces him to give him a Okay, and as the days pass, Coulson gets increasingly jealous of the fact that Cyrus is spending so much time with the stepdad, so Coulson devises a plan. A plan to rip these two apart, get his brother back, stick it to the stepdad, what does he do? I wish I could say this is where shit gets juicy, but actually, I just wanted to call CPS at this point. I was like, Cause somebody call CPS, like this is literally cream in my sizable cock. So Coulson's plan is to dress up as Cyrus, cause apparently they look exactly the same, and to sneak into Tauron's office and seduce him sexually. I've never made any secret of the fact that I am a complete tart. I wish I was making that up, fuck. And this seduction leads to a fucking bl- also, at this point, this is, they, they are still 17. Okay, so this is two weeks before their 18th birthday, and I think I saw a TikTok of the author saying, if these two weeks just bother you, don't read this book. And I was just like, why couldn't you have just waited the two weeks then? If you knew that this was gonna cause shit for you. Look, I don't, look, I did not make this video for people who defend this book. If you are a defender of this book, this video is not a safe space for you. But just in case you made it this far and didn't watch the intro, go straight to the comments section and be like, you bitch, it's just fiction, you bitch, gatekeeper. Can I ask you why, what your theories are as to why the author didn't just wait the two 
freaking weeks. Not that waiting two weeks will condone these actions, you know. But look, I'm done trying to think about this shit. Let me just continue on with the storyline. Storyline. So we get to Cyrus's point of view and we realize that this entire time he is developing some feelings for Tauren. Tauren, Tauren. I don't know how to say this guy's name. He's a surfer. Whenever he sees him in his wetsuit, he's like, I want some of that. Stop. So, Tyron sees this desire in Cyrus' eyes and recalls that night in the office when he was under the impression that Cyrus him. So he kisses Cyrus because in his head he's like, this guy went into my office the other night and slurp slurp slurp. <laughs> and in Cyrus' head he's like, what the actual is going on? So Cyrus is confused, but he likes it. And Coulson does not like that Cyrus likes it. So that night, he's like, you know what, I'm gonna make Cyrus hate this guy. So he goes into Cyrus's room and pulls out his phone. He's like, I've got something for you. He shows him a video. Apparently, that night in the office, Coulson taped the occurrence. He filmed a fucking take from freaking Sweet Home Alabama to Kim Kardashian and Ray J. What is this book? What? And at this point, I took off my phone and I started writing what was happening in this book because I was like, there's no way this is real. There is no way that this is actually happening. This and plot twist, Cyrus liked it. Liked watching, like he watched the video and he was like, I like this. He watched the video and he was like, I don't hate this. And Coulson was like, what the Man. Okay, we're gonna get real close because I don't want anyone in this house to hear this. The next day, um, Cyrus is guilty. Okay, he's really guilty and he tries to confess to Tower and he's like, that wasn't me. And then Coulson takes this as his cue to just walk in and start making out with Cyrus in front of this guy. The stepdad is like, oh. And I was like, oh. So then, they, he starts to give the two instructions, and they follow these instructions, and these instructions involve this number, and this number, <laughs> and at one point he joins in, and they have fun. <laughs> so fast forward, eventually Torin finds out that Coulson posed as Cyrus, and he gets all pissed. He's angry, he's pissed, he was like, I can't believe you did this to me, I got played, everyone's mad, everyone's pissed. I think he almost drowns him in the pool. He's like, you motherfucker. And Coulson's like, shit. And Coulson's like, shit. And Cyrus is like, okay, we've already done all this illegal shit. Let's not do murder. Okay, because that would make the story more interesting and we can't afford to do that. And I was just like, damn it. Given what was happening, some murder would have been fun, honestly. <laughs> so eventually Coulson becomes persona non grata-ish. Nobody wants to talk to him. Nobody wants to associate with him. Cyrus still feels sorry for him, but Torin is like, this little shit. So needless to say, um, Cyrus and Tauren get to spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with each other. And um, in the interest of keeping this as monetizable as possible, I will literally just say that someone gets tied up. Okay, and eventually things get resolved when Cyrus opens up to the stepdad, he's like, and he opens up about Coulson's feelings, about feeling loveless and depressed and stuff like that. Oh, I forgot, earlier on in the book, the stepmom, whose name I just remembered was Carla, I think, she had gone on vacation with some friends, so she is not in the picture as all of this is happening. So while she's gone, their relationship does start to normalize, and by normalize, I mean they're not fighting, they're, they're still f***ing though. So, I mean, not super normal, like, at all, but, like, in the universe of this book, they're not at each other's throats. Actually, they kind of were. So, Carla gets back from the vacation, and she gets back, and she's acting all weird. Everybody's like, okay, what's gotten into her? What's up with her? Why is she acting all strange and bizarre? And something is clearly going on with this woman. So, Tarin confronts Carla. He's like, hey, wife. Why are you acting weird? Why are you spending all my money and acting all freaking weird now? And she tells him that Coulson's phone was connected to her iCloud. Do you see where I'm going with this? And, 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 she saw the f tape of her husband f***ing her son. So obviously she looks at him and she's like, you are fucked up. Get out of here. So she kicks him out of the house rightfully so, and forbids him from contacting these kids, fair enough. And Carla threatens him. She's like, if you so much as come to these kids again, I am going to contact your work, I'm gonna show them this tape, and you are fucked, dude, you're fucked. 
so Taran's like, okay, I'm gonna distance myself. So time passes and the, they start to miss their stepdad and she's like, you can't see him, you little shit. <sighs> The rest of this book though. So time passes and it is graduation day and Cyrus is the smart nerd so he obviously becomes valedictorian and he's giving his valedictorian speech. He's like, I am smart, thank you for coming to this graduation. Charge headlong into college life. Somebody heckles him in the audience and this heckle, it wasn't like, you're weird, you suck, get off the stage. It was an oddly specific heckle. Somebody called him Stepdad Eventually, everything erupts into chaos and Cyrus is escorted out of the building. Now it turns out that Carla, the mom, was gossiping with the other moms, going all the housewives and being like, you know, I've got some tea. My husband my kids. It's so bad. So Coulson is like, I need to be the hero. So he takes the heat off of Cyrus and announces that it was him that was on the video to, I guess, redeem himself and come clean and get the heat off his brother because of what he did. So then after the graduation, they find a way to meet him and the three of them, again, I, I think the author was intending us to root for the couple um, and think the mom was a bitch, but literally besides being a mess, she did distance her kids from this awful situation that was happening so what's so bad? Like, how is the, how is she the villain though? Considering every single thing that I have just told you, how is she the villain? Nyla Kay realized in that moment, oh shit, I gotta do something about all this. We cannot have them sympathizing for this woman. So she puts in a huge plot twist where Coulson discovers that Carla was giving his therapist, because he was going to therapy because he was depressed, she was giving her his therapist under the desk and she was doing this so he could prescribe Coulson these drugs that would kill him. I am not making this up. And Coulson tapes this on his phone. Is the world okay? <laughs> the answer is no. So then Coulson is like, he gets all depressed, he hates himself, he overdoses on some pills and Cyrus finds the body, they take him to the hospital and in the hospital there's all this drama. The mom wants to take Coulson and have him put somewhere else so she can continue trying to kill her kid. But then Cyrus, I, I can't remember, I, I, I barely remember the circumstances over here, but I think Cyrus finds a video on Coulson's phone, shows it to Taran, the stepdad, and Taran is like, I'm gonna use this as leverage against Carla because she is literally collaborating to try to kill her kid. He finds a way to get her copies of the videos deleted. He like reverse blackmails her based on what I remember. It's been a long time since I read this book. I read this book, I think in July. And since then I have had the notes on my phone and I'm only just recalling the big moments of this freaking 600 page Alabama and fest to you. So anyway, he manages to use whatever lawyers and shit to get Carla out of the picture. The lawyers get involved, they get the necessary help for Coulson, and then they literally live happy ever after. And by happier ever after, I mean they go to different countries and the last like three chapters are just literally f***ing for three straight chapters in different places. One of them happens to be a Ferris wheel that big Ferris wheel in the UK. It's really big, so it would take a lot of time from one part to get to the other part. So they had a lot to do in all that time. So yeah, let me know if you are traumatized and we can trauma bond together. It's been a while since I've done a rant video and, and these videos are honestly pretty fun. So if anyone knows of any books that you would like to see me do a freaking rant on, something just so egregious it has to be ranted about, Comment down below, okay? Give me some suggestions. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Like and comment and subscribe. Share this video with people who have not read this book but wanna know what happens in it or people who you just wanna shock, okay? And with that being said, I hope to see you in future videos and as always, take care. I'll lose myself.